Hello, I am Dr. Laura Bonebreak, an OBGYN and member of the board of ICP Care, and I am here to go over intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy and the changes in 2020. First of all, just some housekeeping, I have no financial disclosures, and I do also need to say that this presentation is based upon current guidelines in December of 2020 and in the United States. So it may not be applicable to other countries, and this also might change after this presentation. Starting off, we'll go through what is cholestasis. Cholestasis is a pregnancy disorder where bile acid transport in the liver is affected by the hormones of pregnancy. This can lead to a buildup of bile acids in the maternal bloodstream, which then goes on to affect the fetus. The characteristic sign of this is going to be itching that's worse at night and oftentimes involving the palms and soles. We do need to note, however, that the itching can become generalized and often does and does not necessarily need to involve the palms or the soles to be diagnosed. Why does diagnosis of cholestasis matter? The main reason it matters is there are risks to the fetus, and these include meconium passage and the main risk that we really worry about of stillbirth. There's also an increased risk of preterm labor, preeclampsia, and gestational diabetes, as well as an increased risk of respiratory distress in these neonates when they are matched at the same gestational age with non-cholestatic pregnancies. To go through a little bit more of the stillbirth risk, there was a recent article published by Ovadia and all in The Lancet in 2019, and this was a look at a large proportion of cholestatic pregnancies. It was a systemic analysis that looked at the stillbirth risk in these pregnancies and overall had pretty reassuring findings. You can see the findings there, but it showed that for bile acids less than 40, there was a stillbirth risk of about 0.13%. For bile acids 40 to 99, it was 0.28%. This study did show that we probably need to be worried a little bit more about pregnancies with bile acids over 100 as they did have a stillbirth risk greater than 3%. Overall, these were reassuring findings. We do need to note that some of these women were delivered early and some of them were treated with ursodiol, so it's unknown if this may have mitigated some of the stillbirth risk. However, um, this was overall reassuring. The other thing to note is that stillbirth in a cholestatic pregnancy is also thought to be an acute event and may not fully be prevented by fetal monitoring. Now I would like to go through a little bit the diagnosis of cholestasis. Diagnosis of cholestasis is mainly a laboratory diagnosis, which would involve measuring a CMP and a total bile acid test. Now, there are a ton of bile acid tests on the market, and this can oftentimes become confusing as they each have their own reference ranges. A number for you to easily remember is the number 10. In comparison with cholestatic and non-cholestatic pregnancies, that level of 10 seemed to be the cutoff between the two, and it is mainly the number that is agreed upon for diagnosis. The other thing to note is that there are some fractionated tests on the market and how these are run, they do have a lower reference range and so some women can be diagnosed with that lower reference range on those tests. In going through the treatment of cholestasis, there are two main mainstays of treatment that we need to talk about. The first one would be early delivery. ACOG has recommendations for delivery between 36 and 07 and 37 and 07 weeks per their current guidelines. They do also recommend the delivery right at 36 and 07 weeks if those bile acids are greater than 100, um, as that is when the stillbirth risk really increases. And there could be consideration for earlier delivery with some other extenuating circumstances. Recently in November of 2020, there was a publication by SMFM that discussed some changes in the delivery guidelines. And this window has now been changed to 36 and 07 to 39 and 07 weeks. This article did stress that this needs to be considered on an individualized basis with a discussion between a patient and a provider to decide where in this range delivery should occur. It is also noted that if levels are severe over the level of 40, the delivery should still occur in the earliest portion of this window and that really only milder cases should be considered for delivery later in the window. The other main part of treatment is a medication called ursodiol. Ursodiol is a bile acid that itself competes with the more toxic bile acids and allows them to be eliminated. Recently, there has been some conflicting evidence regarding the efficacy. There are prior studies showing some benefits, but a recent randomized controlled trial, again in 2019 in The Lancet, was unable to detect an improvement in a composite fetal outcome. However, this study was unable to be powered for a full detection of a stillbirth risk as it would take thousands of women to have that power. That being said, ursodiol is still being recommended by SMFM as the first line of treatment due to some improvement in maternal itch, even if there is unclear benefit to the fetus. Really quickly, women with cholestasis, some of them may have an underlying liver condition, such as autoimmune hepatitis, especially in those early and severe cases. 
So these women should be followed at their postpartum visit with some blood work with a CMP and possibly a bile acid level to see if these have normalized with referral to hepatology if not. You do need also to tell your patients there's a really high risk of recurrence in subsequent pregnancies and they need to watch for symptoms. And then I would also like to direct you to our website at icpcare.org. We have a wealth of information on there and we try to keep up with the latest research and the latest recommendations. Thank you for your time today. I hope you learned a little bit about the current management of cholestasis.